A lot of other U.S. industries have become less made in the USA. But red, white, and blue consumers can usually count on seeing these labels on their beef, chicken, and pork. That may be part of the reason the U.S. consumes more meat per person than almost any other country in the world. But global population is on the rise. It just passed 7 billion and is projected to reach 9.6 billion by 2050. Along with that, the global middle class is rising. And that's important because there's a simple rule that humans follow. The more money a country has, the more meat its citizens eat. So countries with historically low meat consumption are going to be eating more. Americans already play a big role in feeding the world. The U.S. is the number one exporter of poultry meat, and thanks to a huge increase in demand from China, the number one exporter of pork. In beef exports, number four, behind India, Brazil, and Australia. Meat is already big business in America. Can it get bigger? We're going to project forward now. Meat demand is a very interesting part of the global food picture. In fact, it's one of the most fascinating parts. Thomas Hertel spends a lot of time thinking and talking about the future, specifically the future of food. I think if we want to look forward four decades, we should look backwards four decades. What Hertel sees in the past is promising. Since the 1960s, global agricultural output has tripled. And while doing that, the land dedicated to agriculture has increased very little, less than 20 percent. There are issues related to that, but it is nonetheless a remarkable accomplishment. And the question is, can we keep that track record up? The answer to that question starts in the present. The story of meat is in towns like Lexington, Nebraska, where not only do they eat meat, but they rope it, wrestle it, and ride it. Lexington is surrounded by ranches and feedlots that raise cattle and fields of corn and soy that feed them. Not only that, but this is where thousands of cattle come each day to be turned into ribs, loins, chuck, and rounds at the Tyson Meatpacking Plant. Tyson employs over 2,700 people in Lexington, and the influence can be readily seen on the demographics of this town of 10,000. There are some things I can do to help me learn English. Immigrants from places like Mexico, Ghana, and Sudan come to Lexington to work at Tyson. At this community center, new residents are taking English classes. I say yes. Everything. I can do everything. The main that I come here is to get a job. Omar Ahmed learns English during the day before the late shift at Tyson. An immigrant from Ethiopia, he was surprised that the production line never stopped. I think every day they kill like 2,600. At the first time when I came, I say, what happened? The cow is not finished. Every day like 2,600. That is a lot. When they finish, no, still, that is good. <laughs> that is amazing for me. Omar uses his job to send money home to family in Africa. He likes Lexington. It's safe, he says, and quiet. And while he might look for jobs outside of Tyson, he'd like to bring his family to live here. Lexington is a snapshot of just how closely tied local economies and cultures can be to the meat industry. And these towns are all over the United States. In fact, the meat map of the U.S. shows definitive regions of meat production comprised of towns just like Lexington. Beef mainly in the Plains states from the Dakotas to Texas. Pork concentrated in the Midwest around Iowa. And most of our poultry coming from the South and Southeastern states. These are populations sustained by an appetite, and they're looking to grow. In Lexington, Tyson is building a new refrigerated warehouse, a $47 million investment. Communities like this have a vested interest in the future of meat, and they put the U.S. out front, leading the world in producing meat and eating it. But there are obstacles ahead, a change in climate, changing consumer attitudes, and a debate about what meat will look like on the plate in the future.
As the industry works through those challenges, towns like Lexington are going to be along for the ride.